Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose statement remains the same to bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. There is a question I was having a conversation once and um, someone asked a question. Prior to that I heard a preacher was talking and he was boasting and telling someone that don't let him start telling them about the seventh heaven. So the question is, is there a seventh heaven? Is there a seventh heaven? Where did such a concept come from? I don't know how much of you have heard about this seventh heaven and questioned this seventh heaven. and wondering, what is this? I've never heard it before. So I said the question was asked once. Um, I had to do some looking because I didn't see anything about seventh heaven in the Bible. But um, then I heard this man who's supposed to be a preacher on some interview talking about the seventh heaven and that's something that he was privy to. You see, one thing I know is that in Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, the apostle Paul spoke about the third heaven. We'll go into that. But leading up to the Apostle Paul making such a statement, he was speaking about boasting. And he was speaking about boasting. And if he had to boast, that's in chapter 11, he would have to boast about his infirmity. Because in his infirmities is pale and weak compared to that of God. And so... He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 30, If I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmity. And then in chapter 12, it said, verse 1, It is doubtless not profitable for me to boast, meaning to boast in, the, in things that is higher than him. Can boast in your infirmity. But not like you know about um, the secret things of God. Because the scripture clearly tells you that the secret things of God belong to God. So he go on to say, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. And then in verse 2 in chapter 12 it says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. We're going to get into that. What did he mean? You see, many Christians and many people today, they speak about the seventh heaven. But I must caution you, the scripture did not reveal such a place. And based on the authority of the scripture, the Holy Bible, I don't know about any other book. But as a believer, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus Christ, and I declare myself such, a bond servant of the Lord, I'll say there is no such place unless someone can show it to me in the scripture, in these books that God has given us. Unless someone can show me right here in this book, then I do not accept such a thing and I will say that is a fallacy. For the scripture says in Romans chapter 15 verse 4, For whatever things were written before time were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. So if something is not written in the scripture concerning your Christian life, concerning your spirituality, concerning salvation, I say to you, you must denounce it. Because whatever was written for us to learn is passed down, is handed down through the scriptures, through the gospels. And so, this term that they are proclaiming, or some people proclaiming, now I must caution you about the seventh heaven. The term or the phrase come from other religions that has nothing to do with the Holy God, has nothing to do with Christianity. As a matter of fact, the term was rooted or is rooted in Hinduism and ancient Babylonian religion. And as you know, we spoke about karma, which is, which is, which, which is derived also from Hinduism. The phrase, the seventh heaven, Based on those religions that I talk about, ancient Babylonian cults and Hinduism, is a phrase which means to experience great joy or contentment. Mm -hmm. 
based on what they believe and based on what it is saying, they are saying then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heavens. Now, Scripture did not teach us anything about a seventh heaven. Scripture teaches us that God the Father reside in heaven and Jesus Christ the Son is there sitting at his right hand. Now, if there was such a thing, Jesus Christ would have let us know about it. The apostles would have let us know. The prophets of all would have let us know and alert us to that also. I say there is one heaven. Mark 16. Mark chapter 16. Look at Mark 16 very carefully. And verse 19 it says, So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. He was received up into the holy heaven. He was received up into the holy heaven, not heavens. Now in order for him to go up into the holy heaven, into the place where God the Father resides, where he is right now, he had to pass through two heavens. You're saying, who? Two heavens? Yes! Because when you speak about heaven, and you're not talking about the place where God desire, resides, you're talking about looking up. You're talking about God's creation above the earth and above the water. So you're talking about the atmosphere, and you're talking about the solar system. Now our eyes can see the atmosphere. You can see the clouds. You can see the solar system. You can see the moon. You can see stars. And if you have a, a, a very good, a very good um, telescope, you can even see some planets. So when the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in body or in the spirit, I do not know. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Caught up to the third heaven. This does not mean you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heaven and Paul only went up to heaven number three. It simply means that Paul had an experience and he said to us right here, whether in body or in spirit, I do not know. But God knows. So Paul was talking about his experience. Listen, look very carefully at chapter 1. It says, I will come to visions and revelations from the Lord. I will come to visions and revelations from the Lord. Now the Apostle Paul make it clear that, listen, I had this experience. Have you ever had a dream and you're not certain what's going on, but you know that experience, it's, it, 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 it's so real. You know it happened. Apostle Paul is saying God is the only one that know whether he was in the spirit or he was in body. But he knew he had the experience. We're going to go to what he means. When he said, I know such a man who can cut. That's the reason if you go all the way back in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he could say this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, it says, for we, for we, can, we are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and 2, he said he, he had an experience 14 years ago. So Paul was speaking about something that he had, an experience that he had. When he said, I know a man, he was speaking about himself. When we think of heaven once again, you must understand that they are not... Any one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, heaven. The scripture clearly tell you. Yes, the scripture detail to you how many heavens there are. The scripture detail to you in no uncertain term. And it's so clear. It does not need anyone to come and tell you anything different from what is written in the scripture. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the hurt. Note, God created the heavens and the hurt. You're saying, did, what, what, what do you mean? He created the heavens and the hurt. First heaven that God created very carefully. Look, Genesis chapter 1, 6 to 8. Then God said, 
Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divide the waters which were made under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, the clouds, the sky. God made it, the first heaven. And God called it, remember, it said in chapter, in, in, in verse 1, God created the heavens. The first thing that God created right there, it said, the waters were there. And God said, okay, wait a minute. Let's create the firmament. Let's separate this. And so it was called the, the heaven. That's the first heaven. Now the first heaven we can see, the atmosphere. God created that. So the second heaven, the first heaven, we can all see. Some of us, when we are going on an airplane, we fly through the first heaven. You may be flying and you're going through clouds and you're looking down. They say, oh, wait a minute. Yes, it's above the hurt. It's above the waters. When we say heavens, you're going to see where I'm going with this. Because where God resides is a totally different place. But God said, let us, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the hurt. Now, God is in heaven. Where God reside is outside of the creation. And we're going to go into that. We're going to explain that. So the first, you see the evidence here in the scripture. And God called the firmament heaven. God called the atmosphere above the earth heaven. Okay? That was the first one. The second heavens that God created was a solar system. You're saying, is it in the scripture? Yes, it is. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. Then God says, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And look at this. And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights, the great light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light. And listen to this. And to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. So God created the atmosphere and God created the solar system. You look within our solar system, you see stars, billions and billions of stars, endless amount of stars. You look very carefully, you see the moon. You look up there, you see the sun. If you have a telescope or you can see some of those advanced telescopes that they're using in some of those research centers, you may see certain planets also. That is the solar system. So God did create the first heaven, atmosphere, and the, ter and the second heaven, the solar system. Now don't let them fool you and tell you about any seventh heaven. The third heaven is God's dwelling place. Now God is in his dwelling place, so God is outside of that. But anything that is above the earth, above what God created, God created. I'm not talking about a bird. That's the reason you can gaze into the heavens. That's the reason, that's the reason certain things go into the heavens, but it's not going where God resides. I want you to get that very carefully because you're going to come down. You're going to come down from the seventh heaven teaching that they're putting out on you. Because there's no such thing. Now, the third heaven is God's dwelling place. Is it in the scripture? Yes, it's very. It, 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 it's in the scriptures. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 8, there was a detail about what took place in heaven. A big thing. Look at this. Revelation chapter 8, it says, When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. When he opened the seven seals, there was silence in heaven, not silent and hurt, not silence in the atmosphere, not silence in the solar system, but silence in 
heaven where God resides. How so? Because John, the revelator, clearly tell you that he had a vision. I was in the spirit. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Uh, it says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice said, I am Alpha and Omega. John had a spiritual experience. John was caught up. And John was there and John witnessed certain things while he was in the spirit, not when he was in the flesh. And while John was there, one of the things that John saw in his vision, and he detailed it, is that when... Go back to Revelation chapter 1 verse 8. He said, when he opened a seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Do you know why there was silence in heaven? Because God's awesome power was on display. God's awesome power was, was, was there for everyone to see. So there was silence. Scripture didn't tell you about any third about any uh, fourth heaven, fifth heaven, sixth heaven, or seventh heaven. But it sounds good, isn't it? It sounds good. But many of you in Christendom, you ought to be very careful. Some of you teachers and preachers ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because you're, you're, you're verse plucking and you're misrepresenting scripture. And you're using things from other religion. You're using things from mysticism to mislead the people of God. Shame on you. Shame on you. When the scripture clearly tells you that everything that was written aforetime was written for our learning. It's clearly documented in the scripture, in the book of scripture, in Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. So shame on you. Why are you going out? You're drawing an Hinduism. You're drawing an ancient Babylonian religion or cults because it sounds good. You want to see, you want to appear as if you know more than someone else. So you're boasting. But the Apostle Paul said, if I had to boast, he had to boast in his infirmities. Not in the things that's above his pay grade, as we would say. And so when you're talking about this thing that they proclaim in Hinduism and in ancient Babylonian religion, about the seventh heaven, many of you don't even know what you're talking about. You just hear something. One man, what I heard um, um, someone ask me about, about the seventh heaven and say, we heard that there's waters and stuff up there. I'm like, who have been there? What do you do to get there? If God the Father with Jesus Christ is in the third heaven, who is up in the seventh heaven? Do you see that that's a fallacy? It's nonsensical to think of such a thing and call yourself a child of God and call yourself a Christian. In the religion Hinduism, they proclaim seventh heaven is the highest, highest place that you can attain. The highest world. And guess what? I bet they didn't tell you that. There's also seven lower worlds that you can go to. And it's all based on the karma that we talked about earlier. Which we should not embrace either. So in this thing that's called karma, which is based on reincarnation. And there's no such thing in Christendom. Just going, just making a point right here. If you were to look at their, at their theology, so to speak. The more good you do, the more you will go up in heaven. So you do all lot of good, guess what? Then you'll reach the seventh heaven. The worse off you do, guess what? The lower you go. Oh, wow. Can you imagine the person that's on the third, the seventh hell? So to get to the seventh heaven, according to this religion or other cults, the more good you do, meaning the more karma, is the more you'll climb the ladder. And so the reverse must be true according to their doctrine. Yes, you have doctrine of false, false prophets and doctrine that's outside of God. And you have doctrines of demons. The scripture tells you so. That many people will become lovers of themselves. It also tells you that they will be deceived by doctrines of demons. And so then, in ancient Babylonian cults, we talk about the Hinduism and talk about you, what you have to do to reach to the seventh heaven. And if you don't do, then you reach to the seventh hell. They didn't talk about the seventh hell when these skeptics and these people were, pro were spewing nonsense to you. But if you were to embrace their religion, you better know that there is such a thing too. 
But my Bible tells me that there is one heaven that we're going to go. And one hell if you don't do what you're supposed to do. So Hinduism teach you that. The best, the more good you do based on karma, you'll go up or you go down. But the ancient Babylonian cults did not tell us, not me per se, did not say that this seventh heaven was a place for human beings. What the ancient Babylonians say was that this seventh heaven is a place where their gods reside. And so you have Mars and you have Pluto and you have Venus and you have all the other planets. Yes, guess what? Those are named after some ancient gods, you know. They are named after some ancient gods. <laughs> I tell you. So you have to be very careful with some of these things that you regurgitate and tell to God's people. Don't confuse God's people. The Bible does not teach us anything about no seventh heaven. So why should we believe this? Why should we believe this mysticism? We do not believe in mysticism. We do not believe in magic. We do not believe hearsay. We believe in the written word because the word of God is true. There is only one heaven, one holy place, one holy of holy, where the Lord our God resides. Only one, not two. Outside of what he created. Not the, not, not, not the, let me clarify, not four, not five, not six, not seven. You know what I mean. I mean, we're getting confused trying to figure out all these seven, seven things. Because it's just crazy talk. No. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 22. This is what it said to us. Who has gone into the heaven. Christ we're talking about. Who has gone into heaven. And is at the right hand of God. Angels and authority and powers have been made subjected to him. Where God the Father resides. Jesus Christ has gone. We said that there is one heaven, one holy of holy, one. And Jesus Christ, our intercessor, is there, sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for our and our behalf. Not in no seventh heaven. You better come back down. Come back down to the earth. Come back down to the earth because the day will come. The day will come when you stand before the great God. The holy God, the mighty God, the holy of holy. And when you stand before him, then you will know whether you're going to go down to the one hell that there is. Or whether you're not, you're, you're, you're at the judgment seat of Christ, getting your reward. Or you're at the great white throne judgment. There it is. The Bible teaches us nothing again about any seventh heaven. Why did we come up with such a concept? Not we. Why did they come up with such a concept? You see, when you mix mysticism and you dabble with things outside of the scriptures, then you can come up with all sorts of theories and everything else to suit the narrative that you're, 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 you're spewing. Things may sound good, but it's nonsense. We cannot see God's dwelling place. We can see the atmosphere, which is the first heavens, we can see the solar system, which is the second heavens, but we cannot see where God resides, the holy of holy, which technically then is the third heaven. And that's where the Apostle Paul said, I know a man that went into the third heaven. Now Paul said that he was not sure if it was in bodily form or out of body, but God knew. And that's the reason, as I said, that when we go back to 2 Corinthians 5, where he was saying, he can confidently say, to be absent from the body is to be present with God. Now, Jesus Christ is at the right hand of God. Now, when Jesus Christ was ascending up, he had to go through the atmosphere. He had to go up, and then they didn't see him anymore. Then they didn't see him anymore. So can you imagine? Can you imagine? Don't even, don't even try to imagine the nonsense about any seventh heaven. Because as one man was saying, or talking about water is there and all sort of stuff is there. How do they know that? How can you be a believer and embrace 
anything else beside the Bible. How can you do that? How can you do that? How can you do that? It's just like some of the books of the Apocrypha watch deals with magic. That is the reason they were excluded from the scriptures. Because the scripture does not deal with magic. It does not deal with magic. God is a holy God. God is not into hocus pocus. God is not into that. No. We can gaze into the heavens as I say. On a cloudy day you look up. You cannot see nothing above the first heaven. Because all you're looking at is storm clouds. All you're looking at is dark clouds. And sometimes you see a, f a, a, a flash of lightning. You see a flash of lightning. You'll see that. And sometimes you'll see a plane flying through the heavens. Not into the heaven where God resides. You got I, want, I, I, I don't know how, how much more simple, simpler I can become. So you can grasp it. But I hope you are. The second heaven. We gaze into. Depends on where you are. If you're in the city. Chances are, if you're in a big city like New York City or so forth, you will never see the stars. You'll never see the moon. Chances are, you'll never have a chance. Some of us have never left the city. And so we have not had an experience to gaze up into the second heavens. All we see every day is the first heaven, the atmosphere, the clouds, etc., etc. And some of us can't even see that because all we're seeing is smog because it's pollution. That's all we're seeing. So the second heaven we can gaze into. Astronauts go up into this heaven. Because astronauts and satellites are released up there. Astronauts make a trip, they go to the moon. You see now where they even have rovers and Mars, they say. That's all the way up there. With our naked eyes, we can't see it. So can you imagine man trying to reach where God resides. And man is even passing that. Creating for himself a second, a, 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 a seventh heaven. That's what man is trying to do. That is a fallacy. If you continue to search for those things. You're going to search your way into hell. If there was a seventh heaven. I ask this question. How do you get there? Because the only way according to Hinduism. To get there. Is the more good you do, meaning their karma, is the more you'll ascend up there. But we in Christendom, we know that it doesn't matter about how good you are and how good you do. Because the scripture tells us it's not by work. You don't get this salvation. You don't earn it by work. You can't boast your way into it. The scripture tells us very carefully, it's not by works that anyone should boast. Let's look at the scripture very carefully. Because if to go to the seventh heaven, you have to do very good, squeaky clean. So if you miss it by a point, you fall down to number six. You miss it, then you fall down to number five. You miss it, you fall down to... These people are so weird. So can you imagine if only place you're going to is the first heaven. You're just floating in the air. Floating in the clouds. And people looking at you floating in the clouds. I can't see you! Because you're floating in the clouds. So it's not by work. Your work is not a qualifier. So that alone should make you confident that there is no such a place based on scripture. Ephesians chapter 2. Listen. Verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And, not, and that not of yourself. It is a gift. Not of works. Least anyone should boast. It is a gift. Not, it is a gift. It's not how much you work, my brothers and sisters. It's not how much you work. If you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. If you believe in your heart. That he died for your sins and he was raised from the dead. And you do what you should do. Then thou shalt be saved. And then you will attain a place. Because he said, where I am, you will be also. I've gone to prepare a place for you. So if there was a seventh heaven, that this mean, this mean that there is separation in heaven. This means that there is segregation in heaven. So heaven could not be real then. 
if there is separation in heaven. Because it means that some of us who do good more than some will be at a higher place. So we can look down at them down there and say, boss, look at them down there. I'm so glad I'm up in the seventh heaven. Woo -hoo -hoo. And then we could boast based on that. But that's not what scripture teaches us. Scripture teaches us that there is just one, 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 one. And in that, that one place, Jesus Christ is, and the Holy Father is, God is. Now, God himself will interact. Listen, Revelation chapter 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And they read all the way down, and there, and the scripture says in verse 4, and God will wipe away every tear from their eye. All those who are in there, all those who are mourn, all those. God will make sure that there are no more tears from their eyes. Not God will wipe away tears from the eyes of people in the seventh heaven. Come down to the sixth. Come down to the fifth. Come down to the fourth. Come down to the third. Come down to the second. Come down to the first. It's a fallacy. Stop believing that. It's a fallacy. It's nonsense. It is nonsense. I say that with no apology. The scripture does not even refer to any concept of a seventh heaven. Heaven is not a separated place. Heaven is not a segregated place. Heaven is not a place that some of us will go further up. We'll have a higher rank than some. This place over here is for those people who did so much. So they're going to go over there. The only thing that the scripture referred to, and some people clutch onto this and mix it with, with, with mysticism and stuff from other religion, is when the Apostle Paul said once again in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, I know a man in, in Christ, whom 14 years ago, he saw where he wrote earlier in this, in this passage of scripture to be absent from the body. He said, I can confidently say to so be present with the Lord. And he said right here, I do not know whether out of body, right? First he said, or in body, but God knows. But God knows. But he says this, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. What is he saying? He was just saying he was privy with this experience. He was just privy with this experience. A man caught up. Caught up to paradise. Given a, given a chance to ascend to, to, to say, wait a minute, this is it. And he did not give you much details. Paul just mentioned that. Paul just mentioned that. The only person who gave you so much about what was taking place in heaven was John the Baptist. No, I'm not John the Baptist. John the, the, John, the, John the Revelator. John. So there's no separation in heaven. Anything separating us from heaven is our sins. Separation from God only comes through sin. That's what will separate us. Sin. And you will not get into the most holy. You won't. You will find yourself into hell. So anything pertaining to God... And our salvation must be, must be, must be, must be, must be separated from mysticism. Must be related to scripture. Must come from scripture. God is truth. And God is truth. And God is truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. Listen to this. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. And that's it. And that's it. I have nothing else to say about this seventh heaven business. This seventh heaven business is nonsense. It's mysticism. It was derived or they adopted it from some other religion. And you can't be a child of God. You can't be a Christian and taking things from other religion. And it's not in the Bible. When you do so, you nullify and you corrupt what should have been holy. The scripture says that you should not add or take away from this word. If this word did not teach you anything about any seventh heaven stop it drop it that's all i am saying to you in jesus name amen